problem that I have in some of this language on the, this EO, the executive order, is some of the things where they talked about um, that they want to, using the Defense Production Act, the order increases federal oversight and regulatory scrutiny of the industry by creating new reporting requirements. Um, so they want to have complete oversight and regulatory scrutiny of everything that everybody's doing. And what do they want to see? Well, they want people to report all of the testing, the training of the AI, of the LLM. So they, the order further calls for AI companies to report on training, security, and testing of, of the AI models. So they want to see what are you feeding the model. It requires that AI developers provide safety test results. Now that sounds good, like I want to be safe, but what do they deem safety? So for example, if you look at reports from the Department of Homeland Security and, and the FBI, they say the greatest threats to America right now are um, disinformation, malinformation, and anything that could undermine the, the state, the confidence in the state. So you go back to um, uh, security, right? And it's like, if this were to put out a, it was actually Alex Epstein, uh, I've had him on my show before. He wrote the book Fossil Future, and he was showing how he was asking OpenAI to talk about um, energy, fossil fuels, and it couldn't even reply. So if the state says that fossil fuels are a threat to national security, then all of a sudden the AI can't have that. So it's like they're creating like this regulatory body that's for safety, but at the end of the day, it requires permission. I mean, is that how you read it, or is that just where my mind goes? No, I, I think you're absolutely right. It, it's this idea of just utter and complete control. Like, I I am not, I don't even consider myself a coder. However, I, I am proficient at Python. I can get away with it. I could build an LLM for you very poorly, but I could do it. But now I couldn't even try to hone that skill to a certain degree. At a certain point, I have to be subject to certain regulations. And the fact of the matter is, the government has proven to us, not just shown us, but proven to us over the course of its history that the people it puts in charge of these positions, like, oh, I don't know, the guy you were talking about the last hour, Mr. Gary Gensler in charge of securities, they don't actually know what they're doing in these roles and they don't know how to their roles impact these things, let alone how to properly build an LLM or some other machine learning algorithm. Yeah, now some of the things I saw on here that... that it maybe seemed kind of good to me, you know. Um, my dad told me when I was 18, when I learned how to vote, he said that, remember, every time you vote for a law, whether it's good or bad, it's less freedom. Some of these things, they sound good, but it's like, do we really need them? So, for example, uh, the Biden Biden's order further directs the Commerce Department to identify science-backed standards and techniques for detecting synthetic content. And so what they're saying is that... Um, Using AI, you could take somebody's likeness and you could you could manipulate it. So it says specifically calls for preventing generative AI from producing child sexual abuse. Okay, that sounds great. I'm, I'm for that. Uh, producing non-consensual intimate imagery of real individuals um, and deep fakes. So like that sounds good. So I certainly don't want child sexual abuse to happen. Um, I certainly wouldn't want non-consensual intimate imagery or deep fakes of myself produced. So that sounds good, right? It, it does. But then I, the question I have to ask you is that is an infringement on your name, your image, your likeness. So it's a copyright infringement. It's also potentially depending on what the deep fake is doing or saying with you. It could be libel. It could be any host of other pre-existing laws that we have in place to actually handle these issues. So, and the funny thing, and I, I was kind of telling you before we, we went live, like at this point in time, in 2023, whether you only watch content on YouTube or you watch Netflix or you go to the movie theater, it doesn't matter. We've reached a point where there's so much computer generated content that like, what is that line? What is that line of synthetic content versus computer generated content that gets dinged or not dinged? Yeah. So... And like you said, we have laws in place for that. So if somebody uses my likeness and says something I don't want to say, then we have defamation and libel. We have things already that are there. So it's like, do we need to continue to stack more things? Um, and, you know, the problem that I have is that it just creates all these, again, back to the law being very ambiguous. And the reason why that's a, 
a good thing for them and a bad thing for us is then they can arbitrarily choose to apply that. So they can apply it to you and not to me. Uh, you don't really fit the definition. Oh, you do, right? Kind of a thing like that. Um, we can see that, you know, they could use, the federal government could use this to strong arm AI companies into making um, whatever concepts, like let's say critical race theory, a foundational concept of their models, for example. So you don't even know this. This is something I talk about. I, I wrote the book, The Shameless Plug, The Uncommunist Manifesto. And because Marxism is so ingrained into our education system, most professors and teachers don't know they're Marxists. They don't know that. They didn't, they didn't purposely go out to become a Marxist. They just don't realize that they've been indoctrinated in this. And so you start to embed these types of principles and foundations and building blocks into these tools that we'll start to use. We'll start to go get information from this. And it's starting to feed us back these embedded principles. And without us even knowing it, it starts to change the entire concept of what America is, the way that we think. And this is sort of what I framed up in the battle for the fate of humanity, which is that history, the long arm of history is just a series of never ending uh, freedom, oppression, revolution. It's just, it's just revolution after revolution after a revolution. But I think that cycle could be broken because with technologies like this, we start using AI to think for us. Um, we use social media. It starts to condition our thinking. Um, it, it's able to censor and stop any sort of dissent type of, of, of thought. Um, they could potentially stop a revolution from ever happening again. And we could be living in this like dystopian matrix type world where they're just feeding us from the time that we're born um, this narrative, this model, and we're never able to really break through. Anybody who sort of breaks free could be just stopped almost instantly. It's very scary, but at the same time, it's very real, the power of this technology to do that. No, absolutely. It, it, there are unintended consequences, absolutely. But I firmly go back to any example that's presented of, well, this nefarious thing could be done with AI or you can create, and that's illegal. There's, our, there's a law in place. Right. We don't, we don't need more laws. We, especially not when it comes to technology that is being developed that is, this is next gen technology. As cliche, as catch, catchphrasey as that is, this is the future that we've been promised for a very long time. Yeah. And to stifle the development of this tech now, it, it's, it's scary. flagrantly un-American. 